but it's falling, there's going to be holes in between. So I would rather just use the head shape to do all of the haircutting. So I'm going to do her haircut in four cuts, okay? So I'm going to do all the interior layering, and this is definitely how, you know, you're going to get, do you always part here? No, I'm, I, Okay. That's all you hear. <laughs> That's either a quick yes or a, uh, okay, gotcha, 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 gotcha. All right, so I got a center parting here, and the reason why I chose the center part is if they're going to wear their hair in any form other than what they have in that side part, cut their hair to a center part. It's going to be evenly distributed. Will it get heavier if you go across with the parting? Yes, but that's okay. So they can move it in different places. But if you cut to just that part, if they don't wear it in that part, then it looks like a train wreck. Make sense? Got it? Okay, check me out. You guys have heard of quadrants. You know what quads are? Mm -hmm. All right. This is really, really simple. It usually takes much longer to comb it than it does to cut it. So I'm going to section her hair into quads. Coming right out of the crown. Center back. I'm going to split this guy down the middle. All right, first section, come over here to the side. I'm gonna elevate the hair. <clears throat> I am not going to cut perimeter first because if you cut perimeter first, you are stuck to cutting within side of the perimeter. Think about extensions, guys. Everyone in the world's wearing extensions right now. If you really think you're gonna blend hair from there to there, good luck. So guys, the thing about it is, is you don't wanna cut all that extended hair off that they just put in to have long hair. You have to make that hair blend. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this section, because this quad is coming out of her scalp, if I twist it, it's going to look like a, a diamond. High point, 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 point. See how that works like a diamond? That is protecting the shape of her hair the way it grows out of her head. I'm going to over direct this to my first corner. See how there's four? So here's my first one, top left. I'm going to bring it to the back right. Does that make sense? Like an X. Okay, so look, comb all the hair to this corner, pull it at 90 degrees off the head. So hair that comes out, it's okay. Do I have a perfect corner here, yes or no? Mm, almost. There is That's a short a piece of hair, short, there's a short piece of hair, and I mean that to me guys down. looks like a corner. I'm gonna take my finger, I'm gonna put my finger down there to hold, I'm gonna come and cut that entire point off of the hair. See that? Enough hair was to drop. Now look, when I toss this back around the side and comb this down, I have the most symmetric, perfectly cut layer in someone's hair that you're ever going to get all the way down there. What the? Okay. So guys, that right there is going to give me a perfect layer all the way down the head. So you'll notice it more in the back on this haircut because you've got a lot of texture to it. But guys, this right here is the key to making money. How many times you guys went into a salon and said, I just want to trim. <laughs> and they cut six inches off and you cry, and you go home, and you write bad things on Yelp. You know what I mean? It, it, it frightens people. This is what I say when I say we're going to protect your leg. They, they need a haircut. You need a dusting. You need something to happen. But for me, this right here is the only amount. I'm cutting every piece of hair on the head that needs to be cut and it's gonna fall perfectly into shape. So here's my second section. I am now gonna take this section to the opposite corner, yay. Now look, see how it's taking shape of the skull? And when you comb this out, guys, that corner is gonna be there every time. Flip that across. Comb that hair down. You have just put a perfect triangular layer with no holes right through the hair. Perfectly. Do it in the back. Got two sections. Now, if you get lost in a haircut and you need to find a guide, I'll show you how to find a guide. Anything that falls out, guys, doesn't need to be cut. It's already short. So I'm going to take this section, come to the front of the head. You had 
some major undercut something going on. Get your name. Oh, yeah, totally. You got it. Guys, here's my corner. Is that not a better perfect view? I mean, you see what I'm talking about when I say corner? It's right there. Now, if you are lost and you need a guide, you pull a piece of hair that's already been cut. Mm -hmm. Show you a guide. So see that? Mm -hmm. So, guys, anyway, comb that sucker down. Perfect, all the way down. Definitely more shape than what this has. Yeah, this is how you manufacture hair cutting. Short amount of time. And then, to finish, there's my corner. It's always there. Now I like to go through and do some personalizing. Do you wear a bang on time? Not always. <laughs> but yeah, sometimes. That might change. <laughs> <laughs> that might change. It's all good. Here it That's right. Okay. <laughs> That's not funny. You guys can't tell Red's still sensitive. <laughs> God, God does one thing to him, you know what I mean? Everything else is just like, you know what I mean? Like, look, and it's just like, yeah, one thing, you know? I'm over here, like, fighting rats on my ankles. I'm so short. I just bought these inserts, go on my boots, give me another inch. Can't wait to get them in. It's going to be fabulous. So, anyway. All right, guys, so now all I want to do is I want to do some internal layering underneath because she got a ton of hair underneath there. Did you guys see that? Yeah. From like yeah, where she's drawing got an a undercut. Lot of hair. I do. She's drawing an undercut out, so there's a lot of stuff going in there. So let's 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 make this a little bit more fun. So I'm gonna section off because I'm gonna cut a bang. Oh boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like bangs. If you can cut bangs well, guys, you make a lot of money in this industry. Mm -hmm. We used to do a class that was specific for bangs, and it was called Bangs for Bucks. And everybody that showed up in the class got their bangs cut. Super easy way to take money. Baby. Now look at what she's got going on over here. This thing right here is honoring. See that? That's him. <laughs> yeah, my whole life. Yeah, that thing should have a name or a zip code. <laughs> you know I mean? It is, it is, it is crazy. So if you and she got on this side too. I don't know if you can tell that, but there it is, right there. Yeah. So that's probably why she's just like, God, he's gonna cut bangs and he's gonna screw it up like <laughs> everyone that's ever cut bangs on my hair. Well, to me, I call this a challenge. <laughs> so I'm gonna cut this because I think this will be cute. Get some haircutting scissors over here. Yeah. I'm going to use this bougie set that I just paid $3,500 for. Mm -hmm. No, but. Right, right, right. What you drive in this industry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, let me see your braids. All right, so the first thing I need to just remove some hair here. You know Whitney Kessinger? I know Whitney. She's my hairdresser. I work with her. Okay. Whitney's the jam. She is the jam. Mm -hmm. Alright, now I've got enough on there. Okay, now hold your head up. So here's the thing about bangs, guys. You want to cut bangs when the hair is dry. If you do not cut it when it is dry, it is going to give you hell because when hair is wet, it is heavy, and you will never see those two corners that I just saw right there. So if the idea is bangs at the end of the haircut, we're going to do that at the end. It's styled, it's dried, then we're going to cut them in. So when I go to cut my bangs, I've got a drop right here that's going to be pretty good right along the eyebrow line. So most people are so concerned about getting a straight line here. Not many people are going to wear a really heavy straight line there. But what you have to do is you have to take the density away. So remember, I'm always talking about cutting forms. If you find out how to read hair, so when I read music, <clears throat> I'm seeing these corners of hair. That's how I read hair. 
So I'm gonna take this corner, every bit of it. By stretching all the hair together and coming to the center, the longer pieces are gonna be on the outside, right or wrong, right? Center is gonna be the shortest point cut. If I pull this to what I like to call a unicorn section, 90 degree out of the head, see where the heaviness is? That's the length of the bang. So I come in here, now when this comes down, <laughs> look at her. Bang face. sets almost perfect immediately because the weight is in my pocket, got my pocket, got my pocket. Guys, it's very easy to set bangs on people if you take the corner off and you have your guide set at the front. Two cuts, and that's in there. Or you can spend an hour trying to chip every little piece into place. Guess what? They're going to look like hell in a week. You know what I mean? That's why we do it for people, because they have to come back more regularly. You know what I mean? So think, how, how often do you cut your own bangs? You know what I mean? So, yeah, every couple weeks you're like, shoot, they're in my yeah. face. They're at my nose. What the hell? You know what I mean? So I don't know why the rest of people's hair don't grow the way bangs grow, but bangs apparently grow really, really fast. Now here's the thing. I'm going to take that same corner section that I took from the front, right? I'm going to take this section over direct here. See the little bit of corner that I have there? When this comes back in, Oh. Perfect. Yeah. Bang-a-ray. Yeah. 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 Um, guys, it's all directional. You know what I mean? Direction. I, I surely wasn't smart enough to learn hair cutting. I was smart enough to learn how to you put it over there and you cut a piece and it falls back over here. It, it goes in the right place. You know? So, once again, over here, there's corner, guys. If I want to blend that section, all the way down. How cute. Let me see my mirror just a little bit here. That's so That's pretty. gorgeous already. So, Aww. yeah, super cute. You know what I mean? And the thing about it is, is she's got such cray, you know, uh, calyx that happen in this, that it's just as easy for us to take this off to the side and swoop it if she doesn't want a flat bang. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's the style. <laughs> I like to change. <laughs> now with my texturizing shears, I'm going to pull that section low and still slightly across the face. See my angle? See how there's a corner there at the end? I'm going to come right in. And that will give me just slight texture. It's not with the straight blade because the straight blade's going to remove all of it. But a texturizing shear will give it that PC movement. You're kind of going with the hair, so you're softening instead of against it, which would... Absolutely. Um, you know, Red is not in the hair business, but he knows he's been to more of these advanced haircutting classes than probably I have, you know, with as many artists as he hosts. So I'm I'm pretty sure he could go past your state board, you know, if you learn the sanitary issues, you know what I mean? So, now because I want to blow out the ends just a bit because she had all that hair underneath there that's trying to grow in, this is where I'm gonna show that same technique I did over here on doll baby's hair. I'm gonna to come to my end. I kinda of saw like a little bit more of like a modern shag coming into this and she's doing so much regrowth. But guys, look at this. Four, four corners for a base haircut. Cut two sections in the bangs. Now I'm texturizing. Guys, I would've had her out of the chair, my God. It's crazy. Minutes ago, right? Challenging my sharpening, but it works. Now we're out of here. That to me sets a lot different. You got stay sharp, so you got plenty of available right now. <laughs> Did mine just reset or something? Guys, I gotta pay for these scissors, just like everybody else. You know how long it's inside I'll pay for anything? 
hair business. That's kind of the trick. You get out there on the hair show circuit, and you're like, Dyson, you have a blow dryer? I got your vacuum cleaner. Yeah, I'm on at 3 o'clock. Thank you. <laughs> cordless clippers? I didn't know they were cordless. Yeah, I've been dragging it. Yeah, I'm on at 3. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so I did, you know what I mean? So when, when this company told me, that year is $3,500. And said, you can pay them Just full, this year? Just one scissor. Just one that we have. It's, it's a limited run. It's a limited run. It's a limited run. Yeah. Not all of our shears are that expensive. <laughs> no, not all, but you know, just to let you know that you know we do make one that's really, really nice. We've actually got one coming up that's going to be six grand. Yeah, I'll buy that one too. <laughs> I was just on the phone with, about that last week, actually. Yeah, I don't even know if I want to touch. I don't want to be responsible for carrying one of those around. <laughs> The key to this stuff, guys, is whenever you work at low degree, see how soft that makes it. Anything that we do with a straight blade at zero degree is gone. But when you're texturizing with the grain of the hair, you get to shape. Now, that hair has a ton of movement, but it still has its width. So if I wanted to take and bevel it more, like we have like in a bob like this, I would just do more sections toward that end, make it have that bevel corner. So. And then just for a little bit of uh, fun stuff, we'll do a little chop suey on the back to show you how this works really, really well. For long hair, the same. Mm -hmm. All I'm going to do is just pinwheel all the way up. Mm -hmm. That way, whenever we go in to do our beach wave, you know how when we beach wave, we're going to do one side here and the other side here, right? Mm -hmm. So then with those little hairs, it's going to give it much more volume. New York Fashion Week was the worst week of my life. I did learn some fun things. Why was it so bad? Because your your hair, 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 hair. I was like, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, my hat's on your shoes and you got on as a girl right now. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I just did not like that I did not get the treatment. Uh, you know? <laughs> but uh, other than that, it was a great well, did you did you, ignore, did you let them know who you were? They so next care. time? You know, the guy that runs New York Fashion Week is a friend of mine. His name's Ted Gibson. I want all you guys to follow Ted Gibson. Uh, Ted Gibson just moved from New York to LA and he had a he had a salon in what's called the Flatiron District in New York. And it's a very expensive area. It's where all it's where all the celebrities or anybody in New York that has money gets their hair done. Okay? And it's just a whole block of hair salons. And the more like my God, it's like they have dog setting for your salon and they get you know what I mean? Like these places are like you, you want to think service out of this world, service out of this world. Ted Gibson's haircut was $1,600. Oh. He just moved to LA and he just raised it to $1,950 per haircut. And this guy isn't cutting one head of hair in a week. This guy has a crazy weight list. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay? So. That's a lot, though. That's right. Ted Gibson is one of the most gifted humans in this industry and always will be and he runs the show when it comes to fashion. If you want a fashion week, Ted Gibson's pretty much running it. If he's not, Charlie Price is. Okay, those are the two hitters out there. But being able to work with guys like that is what's helped me come into you guys and say, guys, look at what I can share with you guys. That's the experience that is needed to be able to stand up and come in here and say, look guys, I work side to side these people. I work side to side of a lady, the first hairdresser ever, to be on a platform or a stage. Her name was Vivian McKinder, and we had a training with her a couple years ago. And I Vivian, class yeah, Vivian McKinder, she asked me, she said, what level do you want to play? I said, I don't want to play at the top. She said, here's a scissor, you got one minute. That doesn't mean, well, what do you want me? No, that means you're, you're next. Here's your scissor, you got one minute. I grabbed a section of hair, I showed Chop Suey, I explained why I did, how I insert, what I do, how it challenges traditional point cutting, and I had that information delivered nice and slow and smooth in one minute, and she looked at me and she said, you can stand next to me and do hair anytime. That was a compliment. That means that I was on my game, I practiced, studied, all those great things. So that's what I'm, I'm here to inspire you guys. You know, I don't know what it is you guys want to do. You know, you guys said color. Some of you guys said I like to cut and color. But guys, this industry, really, if you fail, it's your fault. Because it lets someone like me go straight to the top. 
So it took 17 years, but once again, I'm here to let you guys know how important we are to true like society. Uh, think about it, guys. Can you think of anyone that you know right now that hasn't had a hair experience? Can you? Think about it. So cousins, friends, Facebook friends, managers, bosses, everybody, black, white, Asian, Hispanic, young, old, doesn't matter, you've had a hair experience, right? Everybody's been to a salon or a barbershop. Something that has to be done by another human. Think about it like this. Everybody is on phones today. Everybody. I'm on phones. I got a kid. I got to remind myself to put my phone down and play with my kid. Okay? <laughs> so no, no lie. How many times does another human come in contact and have touch, physical touch with another human unless they sit in our chair? Not often. Not often. People don't even shake hands anymore. That's true. You know? So think about it. That person that works in a cubicle, that works behind a computer, that goes home to no one but a dog, does not have human contact unless they come in and see you every 6, 8, 12 weeks. How powerful is that? Guys, I was asked here in Louisville, University of Louisville has a burn unit down here. I got a phone call, this is a while back, but I got a phone call from the University of Louisville's burn unit. They said, we've got a little girl that's been burned in a house fire. And we know you do philanthropy and we want to know if there's anything you can do to help. And I said, absolutely. So what I was able to do was set up the wig smith at Actors Theater to train a salon to fit wigs to teach them so that she could have hair for the rest of her life. And that's the power you guys have being a hairdresser. I got a phone call from a 92-year-old World War II pilot's daughter. She said, my dad is in grave condition. The only thing he's asked for is dying wishes to get a haircut. Think about that. Dying wish, get a haircut. That's the power we have being hairdressers. I canceled a day, drove my little motorcycle out to his house, sat in his living room, just as you guys are right now, all of his family. And I had to put on a show and cut this man's hair in front of his family that I had never met, watching their dad, grandpa, great grandpa get the last haircut. Because when I took him out of that chair in his wheelchair and helped him back to his room, he died shortly thereafter. But he got exactly what he wanted and that was the last haircut. That's how powerful guys we are being hairdressers. I do this because I love it. It got in this guy's heart, he doesn't even cut hair. That's how good our industry is. We accept everyone, you know? So guys, I'm gonna end this with a little bit of stuff uh, about why I feel this industry has been so good to all of us. But uh, I hope you enjoyed some of the information today. I hope you choose to shop with people that, you know, of course, are gonna do something in return and uh, give you good service. Handsome boy to look at, you know what I mean? I'm not too shabby, I don't think. Uh, anyway, guys, what we're going to do here is I want you guys to do a little repeat after me. I've seen how bad you guys sucked at it this morning uh, <laughs> earlier today, so we'll do it a little bit better this time. And this is so that you guys, yeah, I'll make you do it again if you suck. So just do it one good time, we get out of here and, and be good and come back some cheers before we leave. So when I say there are no haircuts, I want you guys to say without us. Can you do that? Mm -hmm. I'm going to take you down a little, little, little avenue of how important we truly are to society, okay? All right, there are no haircuts. Without, Without us. us. No such thing as a baby's first haircut. Without, Without us. A picture day at school. Without, Without us. Job interview. Without, Without us. us. Weddings. Without, Without us. us. Hollywood. Without, Without us. How am here for Empire School, right? Yeah. Right. Without us. Guys, <laughs> from the start of people's lives to the very end of the life, we are some of the most important people that we've ever come in contact with. My name's Roy J. White. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.